every client is unique and i'm talking about the hyperhidrosis family we have people living with hyperhidrosis who they don't want to use clinical antiperspirants because of you know the fear of aluminum they i mean aluminum has been linked to cancer and all these other uh, diseases however it's been used for years even in your regular antiperspirants aluminum is there but the focus mostly is on uh, the clinical antiperspirants because of the active ingredient percentages and i've always been adamant in explaining you know to the sweat family that once you understand the active ingredient percentage and the use then you won't be moving around with this fear of antiperspirants because let's face it at the end of the day you have the option of level 1 treatment which is the short term short term treatment sorry the short term treatment of the use of clinical antiperspirants and they are designed for you they are designed to help you mitigate your sweat issues so if you opt not to use antiperspirants or you listen to a to to you know a medical practitioner or someone online telling you if you have hyperhidrosis just accept yourself yes it really is important to accept your sweat issue however at the end of the day you need solutions and the solutions that are tailored for us are some of these clinical antiperspirants the however the most imperative thing is to understand the active ingredient percentage the active ingredient itself understand your skin type are you sensitive to some of the are you sensitive to aluminum chloride the liquid uh in liquid form if you are really uh sensitive to aluminum chloride then switch to aluminum sesquichlorohydrate which is designed antiperspirants in this case which have that active ingredient are the best for people with sensitive skin the main purpose for this video is for individuals who don't want to use any of such and they are looking for a solution it's tough however the easiest route would be to go the traditional way and these are the home remedies look at what you have around your home at your disposal to use it for your underarm sweating and one of the most common is um, the use of lemon uh vinegar the white vinegar the same vinegar that has been used to clean your vegetables uh, cause kosha you your vegetables with just running water cleaning them with just running water is not enough you're supposed to first clean with the uh, with the running water from the tap or you have it in your basin and then you're supposed to in equal ratio unoshan vinegar so it's the same thing uh in this case you clean your underarms with white vinegar the ratio um i don't want to be specific but if you want to know the best ratio of the vinegar to use then think of the wine glass you see how people pour their wine in akwaga it's not half somewhere around i wasn't good in maths but look at the look look at the quantity and the portion of how people pour wine into that wine glass and use the same with the vinegar then you dilute it you mix it with warm water then take a very light cloth or an equivalent of a face towel and you use that to clean your underarms the next step is you take your lemon slice it into two halves and then you squeeze just a bit just squeeze your your juice your the lemon juice itself uh here's a cup on top and then take the lemon and rub it 
around your underarms. One half is for the left underarm and the other half is for the right underarm. And then um, application now, apply your baking soda. That is what you apply as your antiperspirant. You repeat that process, think every day, or maybe four days a week from Monday to Friday. If over the weekend you're not going anywhere, you're chilling at home, then you can just clean your underarms with uh, with the vinegar and just chill. You know? However, if you're out on Saturdays and on Sunday, I know you have to go to church, then you have to repeat the process. You have to clean your underarms with the vinegar and then you use your lemon. Apply first the lemon to your underarms and then you use your baking soda. This is just my own opinion. Uh, you don't have to take my word for it. However, I encourage you to go online. There are different sources, different um, people speaking about uh, using lemon and baking soda as an alternative for, you know, clinical antiperspirants since they might lead to cancer and other diseases. And here at HAK, we value people's opinions. We are not end or be all that you're supposed to just follow everything that we tell you because to the T because that is how it's supposed to be. No, but you know, as HAK, we want to give you a plethora of options for you to decide what's best for you. In as much as we have individuals who use antiperspirants, there are those who don't. And, you know, besides the home remedies, the best solution will be antiphoresis machine. And it only requires tap water, which we are going to discuss in, a, in another video of the benefits of long-term treatment, which is antiphoresis machine. But for now, I felt like I should address this issue because we have clients who they reach out to HAK, they learn more about sweat, about their sweat, you know, whether it's uh, their sweat type and category. And that really accounts for the best treatment option. And once they realize that their sweat is more of primary, then the level one treatment, which is a short-term treatment, the best treatment to initialize, which is the use of clinical antiperspirants, they tend to... Um, be very, very uh, cautious about it because of, you know, the, the myths or whatever they read online about aluminum. And the best solution would be to go through the traditional way, the, you know, the home remedy, or they go for aluminum-free topical applications. But in here is where I have an issue because you're applying an antiperspirant that doesn't have aluminum. So what's inside? What is the active ingredient since aluminum, it's not there? It's aluminum free, but what are the active ingredient percentage? You see, for me personally, I would rather use aluminum because I know these are aluminum salts which are designed to manage excessive sweating. And even for normal acclimated persons, the Nivea's of the world, the Rexona, those regular antiperspirants, they do have aluminum as the active ingredient percent. Uh, active ingredient, the percentage may be lower. Maybe we're talking of four or eight, but mostly I think it's quite low. Still, the active ingredient. However, like I said, we respect people's opinion, and as HAK, we are not end all be all. We are here to listen. We are here to support you in your sweat journey. Whether you prefer topical applications or you don't, our work is to support you, to help you understand your sweat, uh, to help you. Uh, and together we work with you in finding the best treatment plan to help you manage and mitigate your sweat issue.